This sentence is about the jazz superstar Thelonious Monk. So first of all, I'll look at the split at the beginning. Half the answers have Thelonious Monk, who was a jazz pianist and composer, and the other half have jazz pianist and composer Thelonious Monk. So the second way of saying it, first of all, it's a bit shorter. This is a bit clunky and wordy by comparison. But even more importantly, in the second choice, C, D, and E, Thelonious Monk, the subject of the sentence, is now directly adjacent to the verb, and that's always something advantageous. If you can put the subject next to the verb, why separate them by a clunky phrase? So rather than have this clunky phrase separating the subject of the sentence and the verb, we're just going to put the subject and the verb together. That means we're going to eliminate answer choices A and B. That leaves us with C, D, and E. So now I'm going to focus on this troublesome word, both. Both comes before the first term of two parallel terms that we're joining. So both X and Y. That means that we're considering X and Y together. If I have both rooted, it's coming before verb. That implies that there's going to be some other verb in parallel to rooted, both rooted and something else. That's not what we mean here. If I say rooted both in, well, then it's in front of this prepositional phrase in, and it implies that there's going to be another prepositional phrase. That prepositional phrase might also begin with the word in or might be another prepositional phrase. But the point is, there should be two prepositional phrases in parallel. That's not what we mean here either. Presumably, what we're trying to compare with the word both are the two jazz pianists who were influencing Thelonious Monk, namely Willie the Lion Smith and Duke Ellington. And so we really need the word both directly in front of them, rooted in the stride piano tradition of both Willie the Lion Smith and Duke Ellington. Well, we don't have the option of putting the both out there because that's not part of the underlying sentence. So probably better just to get rid of the both entirely. So that eliminates answer choice E. Now we're down to answer choice C and D and notice that the difference is, in D, what we have is subject verb, Thelonious Monk produced. In C, we have Thelonious Monk who produced. So in other words, all this is an independent clause. So we get Thelonious Monk who produced, blah, 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 yet in many ways he stood apart. And so we have this yet, which joins two clauses. We have an independent clause in the second part of the sentence, subject verb. And so we would just have a subject without a verb in the first part of the sentence, because if all this is subsumed into a clause, there's no verb for Thelonious Monk in the first part of the sentence. So C is an incorrect structure. D, on the other hand, is free of grammatical error. It is direct, it is sleek, it is perfectly clear, and it is by far the best answer choice.